In this exercise, I want you to create a function that does the following. The function must take two numbers, a start and an end number. The function should check each number in the range given to see if it meets one of the following criteria. If the number is divisible by 3, print out fizz. If the number is divisible by 5, print out buzz. If the number is divisible by both 3 and 5, print out fizz buzz. If none of the above is true, then just print out the number. Once you're done creating your function, make sure you write out some tests. Okay, so here's my solution to the FizzBuzz problem. And just to let you know that this FizzBuzz problem is probably one of the most famous exercises there are for coding interviews that developers get, um, which is why I presented it here. Um, typically, they change out bits and pieces of it so that it's not exactly uh, word for word uh, what FizzBuzz typically is. Uh, but the concepts are are usually the same, and uh, the expected output is pretty much pretty much similar, if not the same. Okay, so uh, there's probably a couple of different ways you could have approached this problem and solved it. Um, probably the tricky part of this is figuring out um, if the number is divisible by these different things. Um, there's actually a trick to this. Um, there's an operator called the modulo so let me jump on over to my JS file so this modulo it's just this percentage uh, symbol there um, so if you do uh, something like 2 modulo 4 then it's going to give you 0 so let's let me grab a console real quick and let's show you that So 2 modulo 4 and, oops, actually I did it backwards, so 4 modulo 2. Okay, so 4 divided by 2. So this is basically doing division, so it's 4 divided by 2, but instead of giving you the answer, uh, if, if you were doing 4 divided by 2, then you would get 2, right? Um, instead of giving the answer, it's giving you uh, a remainder. So if it's evenly divisible, then you will get a zero. So that's pretty much what we want here. So four modulo two. So taking a look back at what we have here. So if it's divisible by three, so that just means modulo three, and then divisible by five, modulo five, and then this three and five, uh, that'll just be a, another condition. Okay, so let's get going here. So function, um, I'm just gonna call this FB, and then we're gonna have a start and an end. And, right, and then I'll just throw my function down here uh, for when we get to testing it. Okay, so we want to check if the number is divisible by 3. So I'm going to do this part of the equation first. I'm not going to uh, do the range. So the range is going to be a loop. But we'll come back to that in a, in a bit. Um, let's do the divisibility first. So if the number is divisible by 3, so let's just do if, let's put some placeholder values in here. Um, so just 4 modulo 2 and then equals 0. So if 4 modulo 2 equals 0, which means that it's is evenly divisible, uh, then Actually, it needs to be three. Three. Then we're gonna console dot log fizz. Okay, and then we'll do it else if uh, four modulo five equals zero. Then we're going to do a console.log of buzz. Okay? Buzz. And then the last one is going to be else if uh, 4 modulo 3 equals 0 and uh, 
4 modulo 5 equals 0. Then we're going to console.log um, fizzbuzz. Okay, so let's real quick see what this would give us. So uh, if we put in, let's see, we put in the value of 4, right? So, so that's, what, that's what we put in there, uh, 4 as our placeholder. Um, so 4 is not divisible by 3, so it'll skip over. 4 is not divisible by 5, and 4 is not divisible by both 3 and 5. So right now it would do nothing. So let's take a look back here. So it says... 3, 5, 3, and 5, and if none of the above is true, then just print out the number. Okay, so we will just, uh, this will just print out 4, okay? Um, so we need to write that condition in here. Else, console.log um, 4, so that's fine. Okay, so you can see that, um, and then if we replace this, um, let me just throw a variable in here just so that we can kind of think this through. So x equals to 4 is what we had. I'm going to replace all these with x. And x. Okay. So, all right. Good. So x equals to four. So we know what happens with four. Let's do another one. Let's let's do three. So three is divisible by three. That's fine. Um, so it's gonna do the this if statement, and it's just gonna print out fizz, right? So three, and then fizz, and then let's do five. So if we did five, or let's even do ten. So ten is divisible by five. So that would give us buzz. And then, how do we get down to this one? So if we do 15, 15 is divisible by both 3 and 5. Um, but you can see there's a, let's see what happens here. So um, if 3, if 15 is divisible by 3, then fizz. So um, this is actually going to print out fizz as is uh, right now. Um, because once it meets the true condition, it's just going to exit out. Um, so it would never hit this one and it would never hit this one. So what we need to do actually is we need to move this up. So I'm going to make this first. And just reorganize it like that. And let's see. All right, so that looks good. So now 15. If it's divisible by both 3 and, oops, this needs to be an x. If it's divisible by both 3 and 5, then it's going to do fizzbuzz. So this is going to give us fizzbuzz now. And it will not execute these other ones. So that's the organization there. Um, so we have that part of it working. So it, it does all this validation checking. Um, but now we need to use the range to actually loop through. So... Let's go ahead and add our loop. So we're just going to use a for loop here for, um, let's see, start. So the start number and then uh, start is less than or equal to end and then uh, start plus plus. Okay, um, so that's good. And then we just need to basically pull this out and wrap it in that loop. Uh, we need to change these uh, values though. So uh, th instead of x, it's going to be start. Let's go ahead and change all those there. Start. So good. So let's go ahead and erase this and let's see what we get. So 
if we put um, 1 and 5, actually let's do um, let's do 2 and 10, right? Uh, let's just quickly say what the answers are going to be. So it's going to give us 2, um, then it's going to give us fizz, and then it's going to give us 4, and then it's going to give us buzz, then let's see 5, 6, so this will give us fizz, and then 7, 8, uh, fizz, 9, and then buzz. Uh, so that's kind of what it would do right there. And then if we actually went up to 15, then we would just continue on. And then eventually when it got to 15, it would be fizz buzz. Okay. So, all right. So that's pretty much it um, for that. Let's go ahead and uh, write out our tests here. So tests, um, let's see. We could just do our 1 and 15. So that's fine. Uh, we can do... Uh, negative 5 and negative 10. Let's see what happens there. FB, and then we can do like our invalid things where we're using strings. Um, you can do, let's see, um, let's do true and false. And then obviously those are going to fail. Um, but yeah, that should be good enough. Let's go ahead and let me dock this over here. Let's go ahead and test this out. So copy that, paste, and let's try this one out. Let's see what happens. So we get one, two, fizz, four, five, uh, buzz, fizz, fizz, buzz, 11, 12, fizz and fizzbuzz. So that looks like that worked perfectly, just kind of like I showed you in the example. Um, let's do another one. Let's see what happens with these negative numbers. Um, so that one completely failed. So let's see why. Oh, you know why it failed? Because in the loop um, it says start so it's going to loop as long as start is less than or equal to uh, end, but this one, negative 10, is less than negative 5, so it's never going to actually execute the loop. So um, that's perfectly fine. Let's grab this one. Uh, that one, well, interesting. So basically it went through, and it ran the loop one time, and it basically just console.logged um, the value of start. So, and this one did nothing, so that's fine. Okay, all right, so that is FizzBuzz, uh, and you can compare your answer with mine, and, but that's pretty much it.